versus Peter Schiff, gold versus Bitcoin debate. You guys, you can't make this stuff up. These guys are actually neighbors in Dorado. This is incredible. But go well, ahead and have a we're, seat. Uh, we're neighbors. We're friends. Absolutely. And we actually work together. And so this might not be what everybody hopes to see. Well, we got some questions. So actually, it might actually be what we're thinking, just not what we're thinking. Well, no, this is, you know, call it having civilized conversation. Yes. With dignity and respect, with people where we may disagree, because guess what? That's what the world needs right now. All right. Wait, wait. Go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Wait, wait. We got to get you. Oh, all right. I'm just going to interject a little reality into this fantasy, but all right. <laughs> well, I, by the way, and we like firm conviction and belief, and we like Sorry. those that know how to communicate their insights. By the way, I, I'm an investor in gold. I hold, own on, gold. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is part of the question. This is part of the question. First and foremost, Peter, there might be a few people here who don't know who you are. Why don't you introduce yourself, sir? Peter Schiff. Um, by the yeah, way, I'm, stop, I'm, I'm, stop, well, stop there. <laughs> Peter no. is... Uh, what I might be to Bitcoin or what some of us are, Peter, is to gold. He's but, as iconic as they come. He is the face of gold well, in many ways. Well, I, no, I, I talk about gold. You talk about And I own some gold. But, I mean, my, my, my business, I'm asset manager. And I'm in finance and banking. So gold is a part of what I do. It's not all of what I do. Um, but I, I understand gold. I, I, I know what it's about and why people should own it. But... You know, there are a lot of things that people should own that I recommend in addition to gold. Gold is a small part of what I do. But I understand the difference between gold and Bitcoin. So Hold on. Why Hold on, sir. We're not there yet. We're not there yet, sir. So we're going to start off with a couple of key questions, right? First and foremost, uh, Brock, do you own any gold? You already answered that question. Yes, I'm one of Peter's clients. <laughs> Perfect. Back um, and, and, and And again, this is one of the things that... We, we should all know in life, we don't live in a world that is this or that. I agree. Like, we can address economic issues and social issues. It isn't this or. There is only end. You're not but, limited to one view. Keep learning. Peter, yes. I want you to tell the truth, sir. Do you own any Bitcoin? Well... There it is. <laughs> no. I technically own a fraction of a Bitcoin. Right. But how many fractions? I no, not not even a whole Bitcoin. But I have absolutely no access to it because I don't know the password to the wallet. So it's basically <laughs> lost. So I own it. I know where it is. I have the address of the wallet, but I just have no ability to actually sell it. Uh, but, you know, pretty soon the rest of you will be in the same boat. I mean, you'll have all your Bitcoin, but you'll have no ability to sell it because nobody will want it. So. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get, let's get back. Let, let, we'll, we'll save the low blows for later. Just hold on. So let's get back. I, and I didn't, wait, I didn't buy any of that Bitcoin. It was all gifted to me. I did, I've never actually purchased any fraction of a Bitcoin with, with my money. That's, that's a really good investment strategy. Um, so, so, I didn't look. So. I wish I had bought some, because I could have sold it, but I didn't. So this, this guy here, is, this is definitely investment advice. Um, so let's take it back a little bit, uh, Peter. Why don't you tell me a little bit of how you got into the gold market, and you know, obviously, where is your experience lie there? Well, I, I I got an appreciation for gold from my father. I mean, my father. Uh, was a longtime proponent. In fact, he was one of the few people who testified in front of Congress in 1968 when they were doing hearings on whether they should remove the gold backing from U.S. currency. And my father uh, testified that they should not do that. And pretty much all the other experts, the Secretary of the Treasury, the Chairman of the Federal Reserve, they all said that the dollar uh, without gold would be stronger, uh, that we would have less inflation and the gold price would go down. Of course, gold was $35 an ounce. And my father said, if we go off the gold standard, the dollar is going to fall and you're going to have much higher inflation and it's going to be a big problem. And of course, we went off the gold standard in 1971 and everything my father predicted came true. And everything the experts said 
uh, they got completely wrong, which is exactly what's going on today. That's exactly you got people going. like uh, Chairman of the Federal Reserve, Secretary of the Treasury, uh, getting everything just as wrong as their counterparts did in the 1960s. Like the gold guys are going to be about Bitcoin. Um, I mean, I, and, and something worth noting there, a lineage of heroes acknowledging and recognizing a lot of the things that we all see here. We have a lot more in common than we realize. The only thing that we debate is what the right answer is going forward, but we have a lot in common. You know, people like Peter Schiff and Ron Paul and these people are the ones that brought a lot of what we see wrong in this country right now and with our monetary system. They were the ones that taught us and helped pioneer a lot of what's happening here. Perfect. That Bro deserves respect. Hopefully the spirit can live on long after Bitcoin dies. By the way, I've been trying to get these guys to debate this for about a year now, so you guys just get, just now come around to this. But ultimately, um, Brock, what led you into Bitcoin? What led me into Bitcoin? Um, well, it's, it started with, I guess, games. I was a very active gamer in my youth and, you know, collecting baseball cards and Magic the Gathering. And, and when the internet and gaming converged where we had persistent worlds, uh, where your assets would live on even when you logged out of the game, and that they were multiplayer and those things were alienable, I acknowledged the potential for a market. And so back in the late 90s, I became the biggest first market maker of, of, of digital assets. And then that became digital currency as the Ultima Onlines and EverQuests and World of Warcrafts emerged. I built up a team of about 400,000 people that played video games professionally, mostly in China, to mine those digital currencies. We were PayPal's largest merchant for years, instrumental in the launching of Alipay, moving billions and billions of dollars across borders where there were currency controls. And, uh, and that's what I did for a decade before Bitcoin. And so, uh, for me, it was inevitable. Perfect. And... What do you think about scarcity, Mr. Schiff? Well, I mean, when it comes to something like Bitcoin, obviously that's your question. Um, look, gold is scarce because there's not a lot of gold, you know, around. Uh, Bitcoin is scarce because there's an artificial constraint on its supply. But gold is scarce and very valuable. Bitcoin is scarce and worthless. And gold is scarce and its value is very unique in that you know the things that you can do with gold you can't do with a lot of other metals or if you could do it you can't do it as well or you can't do it as all at all uh but you know there's there's more than fifteen thousand uh cryptocurrency fifteen thousand five hundred maybe right now i mean you, every, you, i lose count because the supply is growing so rapidly and as far as i'm concerned there's very little difference uh between them i mean to debate gold versus Bitcoin to me doesn't even make any sense because Bitcoin and gold have absolutely nothing in common. I mean, if you want to debate Bitcoin versus Ethereum or Bitcoin versus EOS or Bitcoin versus Dogecoin or Cumrocket or any of these uh, coin, that, that, that's a debate that might make sense because at least Bitcoin has something in common with Cumrocket. But um, it doesn't have anything in common with gold. Brock, look right, at I love Mr. Peter. Mr. Peace. And, but also very important <laughs> in life to surround yourself with people that have a different perspective. Brock. It's how you learn. You dropped your wallet. We might have an earthquake in San Juan. Uh, Brock. Okay, so look, look at me, Mr. Pierce. Look at me clearly. I need you to stop being nice to Mr. Schiff. He's not being nice. Brock. Oh, I, how do you think? We're about here scarcity? for your entertainment. How do you feel about scarcity, sir? Well, scarcity, I mean, obviously is, is core to why gold is an interesting asset and, and, and why I hold some gold. I, I hold more crypto, but I, I'm not, these are not mutually exclusive ideologies. That's the problem. You can't hold crypto. Um, it doesn't exist. It depends on your definition. Remember, your imagination. I'm, a little, I'm a little younger and I, I grew up, you know, in the world of technology. Like it's innate. It's basically in my DNA. And so, 
You know, the question is, yes, are they scarce? Absolutely. Bitcoin is more scarce, and I understand the difference because it's intangible, and it was designed, its scarcity was by design, not of the natural world, but of the digital world. But one of the other things is, you know, Bitcoin scarcity is in obviously decline as the mining rewards, you know, and halvings continue to occur. And I'm not sure that's a good thing for humanity in the long run, but that's a whole other debate. How many, how many Satoshis are there? <laughs> the, 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 the point I want to make... They, they don't seem very scarce to me. Well, it's divisibility, and that's one of the reasons why, again, I mean, if you want to talk about why gold, why this, right? You've got scarcity is core to where value comes from, right? It has to be malleable. You have to be able to take it apart and make it into different denominations. It has to be transportable. Um, it has to be non-spoilable. You wouldn't want it rotting under your mattress or whatever that is needs to be fungible, like why diamonds are not. These are very specific attributes of why we ascribed value to gold historically. Those no, no, are no. the core reasons. One that's, of the things, Brock, that's why gold is useful as money. That's not why gold is valuable in the first place. And sure, you could divide Bitcoin, but when you're dividing gold, you're dividing something. When you're dividing Bitcoin, you're dividing nothing. And the thing is, even if I have one Satoshi, I can do as much with one Satoshi as you could do with a whole Bitcoin because I can't do anything with either. But, you know, there's a you could do a lot more with an ounce of gold than you can with a gram. Uh, again, this is back to the last point I would make. And yes, it has certain utilities. Conducts. The point is intangibility. Is it tangible or intangible? You know, I was one of the first people that acknowledged and recognized in creating these markets as a teenager that just because something wasn't tangible did not make it less valuable. And that is really the sort of debate that part of this is, is you can't touch it. Therefore, it's not real. And that's what a lot of, you know, those people in our legislature and a lot of the people that haven't really understood what this digital sort of revolution is. Dinosaur. And how technology is changing our world. And I get it. It's a difficult thing for a lot of people to grasp. If I can't touch it, it must not be real. It must yeah. not have value. But where does yeah. value come from? Really? Value comes from a shared belief system. It's valuable because two or more of us agree. And the more of us that have that shared belief, the more of us that consent or consensus is reached that this has value, therefore it is. If we believe it, it is. And yeah, as long as enough people agree, then therefore it is. We may disagree with them, but that's up to them. You don't have to transact in it. Yeah, they, if, they, you know, a billion of us agree that Bitcoin has value, guess what? It has value to a billion of us. Yeah, the, the whole argument about tangible versus intangible, that's a straw man. Because I understand the difference between tangible and intangible assets. Right? Tangible assets, intangible assets have value uh, because of what you do with them, what you use them for. Uh, right, intellectual but, property. No, but Bitcoin doesn't have those values as an intangible asset. It's not. It's not music. It's not a software program. It, it's. It's nothing. I can't do anything with it other than give it to somebody else. That doesn't give it value. Now, Bitcoin has a price. I don't argue that it doesn't have a price. And you could put a price on anything. If someone is dumb enough to buy it, you know, there's a price. And right now, people are willing to buy Bitcoin. So it has a price. It has a market price. But that doesn't mean it has any value, but people will buy it. That's why when they say Bitcoin is a store of value, like gold, it's nothing like gold and it doesn't store value like gold because the value that gold is storing is its value as a metal. And it stores that value very good because gold's properties that are very unique among metals um, don't deteriorate over time. So gold today is the same as that gold a thousand years from now. It doesn't lose any of its properties. So it can store those properties over time. But Bitcoin doesn't have value like gold does. It has a price. You cannot store a price. Price is determined by supply and demand. And like you said, it's a belief system. So if people believe that Bitcoin has value, well, it'll have a price. But when they stop believing, well, then it's not going to have a price anymore. So... All of you have value. We have value. 
Bitcoin's value comes from the fact that we give it value. And if you want to talk about things like intangibles, what is the Bitcoin brand worth? If you want to talk about these more traditional concepts, what is that branding worth? You know, what is the brand and the awareness and all the marketing and all the things? These are the things that create value. It may not look like anything that we can acknowledge prior to it because this is a paradigm change. It does not play by the old rules. It, it value, its value comes from us. We give it its value because we choose to create a new reality. We choose to live in a different world. You don't create and we have a new that reality. power for you, the first is, time in history. There's reality and there's fantasy. There's reality and there's fantasy, and you can choose to live in. Hey, a we're fantasy making we're making this dream a reality. And you 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 are ascribing value where it doesn't exist, and you can pretend that Bitcoin has value all you want, as long as other people want to pay play make believe. Then the game can go. I mean, you said you like hold on, playing is games. It that re hold this on, isn't is that game. reality that we've been living in for thousands of years? Huh? Isn't that what we've been doing for thousands of years since what the beginning mean? of civilization? No. Dreaming up ideas, things that are impossible that don't exist, and then making them reality. Well, some people dream up nutty ideas too. What happens? That's how it starts. What 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 happens? Okay, so like, let me try to bring it in a little bit more. All right, Mr. Pierce, what would it take for you to give up all of your Bitcoin holdings? Um, I would give up everything in my life if I saw a way to ensure that there's a world that's going to work for us for the generations that follow. I I live my life in service. And if I saw a, a place where I'm happy to give up everything I have, if it ultimately is going to ensure there's a world for my children and your children and their children, that that I would do it right now. That, that was a great answer. But unfortunately, I, I missed the key part of the, the question. I don't, I, I don't see that thing yet. No, so. the, key, <laughs> the key part of the question was give up all of your holdings and go into gold. Sorry. Hey, I, I believe in, again... I, I, Give up not, all the I'm Bitcoin. Not, I'm, not a, Bitcoin. I, I'm agnostic in the sense that I don't, I'm not a fundamentalist that says this is the only way or it's my way or the highway. You know, there's lots of potential futures and I'm interested in all of them. And gold clearly is that system for thousands of years that has been the pillar of this, this idea of financial freedom at a time where it's so important. I don't reject the idea. I respect the idea. But that doesn't mean it's the only way. And I'm interested in the new ideas. I'm interested with the tools that exist in the world right now to see what we can co-create. Can we build a better system? Can we build a better world? And I, we don't have that answer clearly yet. There are still lots of issues with the things that we're building. Gold still has a seat at this table. But that doesn't mean we stop and we don't imagine Again, our imagination is the only limitation. And what we believe in, what we give power to, is will be that thing. But let's make sure we build the right thing that ultimately but, creates a world that works for everyone. But if, if the problem, in, if you understand the problems inherent in the fiat monetary system, and you want something better, you don't have to try to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to think that replacing fiat paper currency with fiat digit currency is some type of improvement just because it's not issued by a government, but it's created by people. If you really want something that works, you go back to what's worked in the past, which is gold as money. And if you want to bring gold into the digital age, there's nothing that says you can't use blockchain, you can't use crypto to have a cryptocurrency backed by real money, gold, where that cryptocurrency is a digital representation of actual gold. And it's going to be just as divisible, just as portable, just as transferable, except that type of system could actually work. It would be a store of value, a unit of account, a medium of exchange. It would work as money in the 21st century, even better than it did in the 19th and 18th and all the centuries before. That's what works. The fantasy that you guys have concocted around these fiat cryptocurrencies won't work and it will end in disaster. My fear is that it's going to end up making governments look good and making fiat currency look good when all these people around the world are going to be complaining about how much money they lost in bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and looking for the gut to the government to, to bail them out and by the way I, I share some of those concerns 
there are some things happening in this industry, you know, this wild, wild west that I'm not a fan of. There are bad actors utilizing asymmetries of information to take advantage of newcomers. You know, I am not proud of all the things I see in this space, but that doesn't mean, remember, the Wild West became California. The internet in the 1990s became the internet. You know, just because there are some things that we see that we don't like does not mean that there's not something emerging here that, that matters. And, 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 and more importantly, you're like, let's always, why reinvent the wheel? Why continue to run on those old systems? Like, who in the room thinks we should continue to run on fossil fuel indefinitely? Or do we continue to innovate to try to build better systems? You know, just, it's called, hey, that the, the, the system that's working still might be the right system for another round or another millennium. But that doesn't mean we stop trying. It doesn't mean we stop dreaming. It doesn't mean we stop imagining, right? We have to keep trying to improve upon things. Yes, improving. We have to build a better world. And almost everything I look at, our education system, our healthcare system, our political systems, our system of governance, our financial system, our agricultural system, you name it. I look at every single one of them and I believe they can be done better. And I, and I, I hope that every one of you make your lives matter as much as you possibly can. Find your passion, that is your purpose, and build a better world, because the world needs you now. Yeah. We, we've, made, we've made a lot of improvements on the first wheel, but we're still using wheels. So we can improve gold as money, but we don't have to reject it. We don't have to try to reinvent gonna, something else and claim it's gonna work as money. It well, the wheel's, the wheel's pretty efficient, but we eventually learned how to build Airplanes. Engines and airplanes and rockets and yep. guess what? We've got anti-gravity systems yep. and coming are, and, and things still. that are going to eliminate even the need for that. Yeah. You know, and you know, your plane still has wheels when it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. All right. So last question for you guys before we open it up to the uh, audience. Uh, what would it take for you, and we'll get you as well, to change your stance and to go into Bitcoin? I, I can't imagine anything at this point. I mean, I've known about Bitcoin, uh, you know, maybe even before Brock knew about it. I mean, I knew about it early on. I mean, it was, I don't think it was under a dollar. I'm pretty sure it was under 10. But I, I knew about it. I understood it very early. What was the price of gold at that point? I don't know. Probably about the same as it is now. <laughs> just checking. Just checking. Maybe, but, so, maybe a little. Just checking. But, um, but I knew about it. Um, and, you know, one of the one of the original problems I had with it was, well, what's to stop people from coming up with other cryptocurrencies and just call it something else? I mean, it's not like somebody else can't come up with one. And of course, they came There's 15,000 of them. But uh, Bitcoin I, you know, is still Bitcoin. Yeah. And it's still reigning but, supreme. But my but my point, my point is, if I didn't buy it, then I sure hell I'm not buying it now. I mean, it, because at least then not a lot of people knew about it. You know, I, I just didn't see at that early stage, you know, the, a bubble getting this big. I just didn't see it catching on beyond the libertarians that were telling me about it. Um, by the time I saw it move up, and I remember when it moved up, you know, to a thousand, and I'm like, crap, you know, I, I could have bought that stuff and, you know, made some money. And when it pulled back and it was, you know, 200, 300 for, for a few years, I looked at it and I thought about buying it as a trade. I was like, you know, maybe this thing's going to make a new high. And I was like, you know, but I'm not going to buy it. I didn't want to buy it. You know, I'm not paying this much for, for Bitcoin. And then, of course, you know, you see what happened. Um, but, you know, I think the, the upside, the big upside in Bitcoin is long gone. You know, the, the idea that anybody buying Bitcoin now is getting in on the ground floor or some opportunity, that ship has sailed. Um, you know, I think there's a lot more downside risk in Bitcoin relative to the upside potential. I mean, mm. could it go to 100,000? It could. How much higher than that? I don't know. But it also has a lot of risk. I mean, it's not going to go up 100 fold like it's already done. Oh, gold, uh, so gold is no, definitely going to go no, up 100 fold. Right? No, I don't buy gold for that reason. Gold is a store of value. It's a hedge. It's a conservative safe haven. You don't buy gold to get rich. 
You own gold to stay rich. But my point is, I own other speculative assets that I think personally at this level have a lot more upside potential than Bitcoin and less downside risk. So if I'm going to speculate now, Bitcoin is not where I want to be, nor these other cryptocurrencies. And I think at this point, you have a lot of people, you know, I, I didn't even know until I heard it at these, this uh, hearing this, the other day that 80 percent of the people who own Bitcoin have never even sold a Satoshi. Uh, you know, what happens when they eventually start to? I, a lot of people that own Bitcoin are losing money because a lot of people got into it in the last year and they paid higher prices than what you've got now. We'll see how, we'll see how long you know, they want to stay in this thing. I think there's a lot of leverage in it now. There are a lot of people that have borrowed against their Bitcoin. There's a lot of margin calls coming, a lot of forced liquidation. There's too many people in this that are so confident they can't lose, that are convinced they're going to get rich. That is not the time to buy something. Even if Bitcoin is ultimately going higher. How many people in here got rich off of Bitcoin, first. man? Raise your hand. Hmm? How What's many you? people in here got rich off Bitcoin? How many people in here got rich off gold? I, I, but he made that point. That is yeah. not the reason why you buy gold. You know, again, gold has its purpose. I'm not here to, to, to criticize gold. It's been tested for a long time and it has its uses. Um, people it's forget not, it's too. not going away. People um, forget too. Gold was under three hundred dollars an ounce twenty years ago. It's not like it hasn't gone up. You know, with inflation, it's gone from three hundred to eighteen hundred. Now I know that's not Bitcoin, so that doesn't excite you guys. Uh, but it's beaten the S and P during that twenty year time period. Let's get questions but, to answer. We about to wrap up. We got a question to audience. We got a guy by the name of Tom Bates. Go ahead, take off. Turn the microphone on. Sound guy. Help. Kim, Tone, you know how to turn on a microphone, I'm sure. Sound guy. He, Jesus, pay attention. Jesus. Hi. Mike. Okay, they got it. They got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. If you don't, so you say Bitcoin has no utility. My family immigrated Soviet Union. We were only allowed to leave with $100 per family member, no matter how much wealth we had. Metal detector technology is now even better. A use case for Bitcoin is you can take all your wealth in your head, something gold can't solve. What do you think about that use case? The unconfiscatability of your wealth. Well, I don't know how unconfiscatable it is. I mean, plenty of you know criminals have had you know criminal proceeds uh, confiscated. Authorities have seized Bitcoin. It's not like they don't know where it is. In fact, if you watch those Bitcoin hearings, you had all these people telling congressmen how the worst thing you could use if you want to evade government regulations is that Bitcoin. Hmm? It, 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 and that was one of the points I didn't finish on this note. But when we talked about tangible versus, you know, intangible, I didn't finish the point of some people are like, I can't touch it. It's not real. I would argue that intangibility is a better feature than being tangible. It can move in the ways we just talked yeah, about. But, you can send it anywhere in the world, but basically instantaneously. You can't counterfeit but, it. It's malleable instantaneously. But, Rob, uh, there's, there's some pretty awesome attributes of intangibility. You can do the exact same thing with a cryptocurrency backed by gold or something real. You don't have to use Bitcoin. And guess and what? Then, you could, because when you when you're transporting your Bitcoin, you're not transporting your wealth. You're transporting your Bitcoin because the value of Bitcoin can implode at any moment. You have no idea what you have until you sell it. And guess what? A lot of people are going to do exactly that. And the good news is. Those that prefer to do that are allowed to do that. Those that prefer to do Bitcoin can do Bitcoin. Those that prefer to do Ether, whatever it is, they can doze, doze away. The good news is it's the choice is yours. Peter, how many books? You get to choose yeah, like, what you believe wait, wait, wait. in. And guess what? We wait, don't next, all next. have to do the Rob. same thing or agree that thank God we're different. Just like and the, thank just God like, we have a choice. Just like the dollar was better when it was backed by gold. A cryptocurrency is also better when it's backed by gold. Hey, I mean, I, I, start, I started Tether Let's with this same concept. I'm like, we can put other assets, including government money on the blockchain. We can put gold on the blockchain. 
I believe in diversity of choice and Next opportunity. Question. Next question. Before you ask that question, though, how many blocks of gold you got in your pocket, sir? Oh, okay. Go ahead. So, Thank Peter, um, he's got more gold on him yes. than I, I do, but I, I got I, gold on him. Blocks of gold. How many, how, how, many block, how, how many bricks of gold you got on you, sir? None, right? Okay. Uh-huh. Peter, um, we've seen in the past several years that people have taken latinum or, or a, a something, a metal similar weight to gold and then surrounding it by gold, counterfeiting a whole brick just by plating it with gold. The answer I would have said was when will I get rid of Bitcoin is when somebody can counterfeit it and it's been 10 years and it can't be counterfeited. We can well, counterfeit gold. No, you can't. Oh, you gold, can. No, no. A gold bar you, can be look, an inside fake. No, no. Okay. So if gold was so easy to counterfeit, right, why has it been working as money for so many thousands of years if it's so easy to counterfeit? It's a gold is technology. one of the most, gold is one of the easiest things to verify. In fact, it's harder to counterfeit gold today than it was 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago, yet it worked fine. Now, if you're a complete idiot and someone gives you a brick painted gold and you're dumb enough to think that that's gold, don't blame gold for that. Blame blame the guy that was dumb enough to think it was real. It is very easy to tell real gold from fake gold. have, Have any of you in the room ever tested your gold for its authenticity? Okay, we've got a couple people that have done that. And, and was that really easy to do? Just, okay. Just not, buy, not, just, not, that, just not get, like the sort of thing you would do at the counter every time you're doing a transaction. And if you ever, any of you ever run a business where you've got people in like retail or doing anything like that, and imagine if every time someone showed up to buy a cup of coffee, you had to test their money. Well, you don't have to do that. You can use a digital currency backed by gold. And you know the gold is real because it's already been assayed by the custodian. And I, by the way, and I like that idea. And I think that there will be millions of people, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions, maybe more than a billion people on earth that prefer that solution. And they're not mutually exclusive. We can respect other people and their views and say, hey, it's your choice. If that's the world in which you want to live, good, good for you. Next You're question. welcome to do that. Uh, Peter? Yes. Hi. Uh, Why do I get the feeling most of the questions are for Peter? Yeah. Go ahead. Next question. <laughs> so, Brock, this is rare for you, bro. Most of the questions are usually for you. Now we got Peter. First of all, thank you very much. Well, you guys get to see me more often. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Peter. Let me get a round of applause for Peter Schiff, man, yeah. showing up to the debate, man. Bottom line. So, Peter, uh, this, is a, this is a personal question, right? You've been, you have built uh, a pretty astounding career by having, by holding a contrary ambition on what most of the consensus is, especially in cryptocurrency conference, right? And you have been, you have, you have a large track record and you're speaking in most of the cryptocurrencies, providing this, you know, Bitcoin is worthless, type of <laughs> contrary, which I do believe is valuable. But in hindsight, what I would like to ask you is, has this career that you've built on the Contradium view, it has been more valuable than if you would have gone all in on Bitcoin when you first knew about it Ouch. today? Well, I mean, look, that's obvious, right? I mean, if I'd have gone all in on Bitcoin, Brock be flying around in my plane, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be hitching rides on his, but look, Yes, clearly, I mean, well, any of us, I mean, a lot of people, when you first found out about Bitcoin, put a little bit of money in. They didn't put their whole life savings in, but with the benefit of hindsight, you know, yeah, I mean, I could have put a lot of money into Bitcoin. But when you talk about me as a contrarian, look, I'm a contrarian um, as an investor, right? Because if you want to, if you're a value investor, by definition, you have to be a contrarian because... Value investing is about buying things that are out of favor, buying things that are cheap that nobody else wants. So in that respect, I invest like a contrarian, but I've been a contrarian in my worldview to the status quo. Many of the people in the Bitcoin community share that contrarian view. Uh, you know, the mainstream view is that the Federal Reserve is great. The U.S. economy is great. You know, there's nothing to worry about. And I've always been out there warning you know, about the consequences of this reckless monetary policy and fiat money and the asset bubble. So I've been a contrarian in that respect. I'm not trying to be a contrarian when it comes to Bitcoin. I mean, 
Bitcoin is still a contrarian perspective. It's still not the status quo or the mainstream, even though it has made some inroads. Uh, so, uh, you know, being a contrarian to a contrarian, you know, I'm not trying to do that. I just understand the, the inherent flaws in Bitcoin. I understood them before most of you ever, ever heard of Bitcoin, right? I had already gone through it. I knew exactly what it wanted to be and what it was trying to do. You know, I just didn't think that enough people would, uh, would agree that they even needed Bitcoin. Right? I didn't think there was enough contrarians like me that might get fooled into buying it. I guess I underestimated that aspect of it. You never um, lived in a place where the economy well, crashed. I underestimated the collective intelligence of humanity well, I wouldn't and, say our intelligence. Ability, and our ability to learn. And one thing I point out, the reason, you know, one of the main reasons we're here on Earth is to be good stewards, to pass on this world to the generation that follows. And Peter's son is doing yeah. very, very, very well with Bitcoin. I, I think, Brock, I and think so I, the, the, prob the, the family is winning in the best ways possible yeah. because you don't have inheritance tax. The, the problem, you, Brock, you, the you, problem is, is that I that I underestimated intelligence is that I overestimated. Peter, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Honest question. Is your son worth more than you? <laughs> He's 19 years old. What do you think? He's going to lap you soon. And listen, we got a couple <laughs> questions down. There, we got to cut the questions down because honestly, we're running out of time. We're going to get two more. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, I'll make it very quick. Thank you. So, Peter, uh, I, I love hearing your perspective. It's great to hear these talking points. You're super bearish, the bearish, I think, out of anybody I've ever heard. Now that there's a Bitcoin derivatives market, will you start to short Bitcoin? Would you buy? Oh, yeah. Put your money up. Would yeah. A lot of people ask me, you know, if, if I'd short Bitcoin. And, you know, I mean, I'm probably more likely to short it than to be long. But I just don't see any real reason for me to short it. I mean, yeah, it could go down, um, but I have to post money. I have to have a margin money. And maybe it goes up before it goes down, and maybe I have to keep on meeting calls. I'd rather put that money to work someplace else. I mean, look, Bitcoin went to 70000 almost. So could it go to 100000 Sure. <laughs> Could it go to 200,000? It's possible, right? Um, so, you know, why short it? I mean, not there, I'm not short stocks either, even though I think stocks are overvalued. I I'd rather own the things that I believe in and the things that I think are going to do well than, than get involved. I mean, but in a way, I'm short Bitcoin in that I don't own any of it. So if all you guys are right, I'm going to end up being broke in this new world that you think we're headed to because I don't own any Bitcoin. Your son's going to but, Again, but, I pray. But, the, world, the future is not a singular world with only a single asset but, that we ascribe value to. But you know to. what I do own? I do own a lot of things that people who have Bitcoin want. You see, eventually, a lot of people that are holding Bitcoin are going to want to buy some real things. That's what I got. I got all the real stuff that people with Bitcoin are ultimately going to want to buy. The problem is everything I may but a not plane. accept any Bitcoin in exchange for my stuff. You got everything but a plane. Keep pitching around a box plane. And by the way, the, and, and shorting just in general, he gave you wise advice there. Markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay liquid. The most you can make is doubling your money. You can lose infinite. It's Invest in things you believe in unless you really you know, want to learn that game. Shorting is, it, it, it's like when you hit the craps table, you know. Invest in Why gold. play don't pass? Invest in gold if you're really rich. You and can you're use it as a form ever of make savings. Any money. You don't have to be I, rich I wear it. to buy gold. I, I, don't, I don't dislike gold. Right. You know, you don't have to be rich to want to preserve wealth. Even if you don't have a lot of wealth, you still want to preserve it. Gold is a, a form of savings. It's not an investment. Right. It's a form of savings. Last question. And, my, and by the way, my favorite use of gold is drinking it. How, how many of you are familiar with that? Uh, for its, health, its health benefits, like, cold, you know. How many of y'all ate the billion dollar burger at the atmosphere? But anyway, go ahead. So I keep hearing a lot about scarcity and all of the gold available right now, about 200 to one is paper gold. And uh, SpaceX just launched a rocket ship to redirect an asteroid. So we're starting to work on asteroid mining now. So in the very near future, it's very possible that we're going to be able to bring in massive amounts of metals, 
and all types of elements into the planet, which would flood the gold market and <laughs> make it pretty much useless. Uh, it depends on your well, definition of very near. Uh, very near well, maybe might yeah, not be the right I mean, answer. Eventually. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of pie in the sky nonsense. There are no gold assets. It's not nonsense. It is pie in the sky. <laughs> but but your point about paper gold, that is true, right? There is a lot of paper gold that is traded, that is not actually used as gold. And that is ultimately going to be a big problem because I think there is going to be a blow up in that market at some point. Because I do believe that a lot of the holders of paper gold are actually going to try to convert those claims into actual gold and there's not enough gold to go around and that's going to be a huge financial problem for those exchanges those counterparties and a lot of people who have sold gold that they do not own are going to have to rush into the market to buy gold to deliver it and it's not going to be there and so that could send the price of gold up dramatically but Paper gold doesn't increase the stock of actual gold. So just because you have futures contracts it, like, and derivatives decre doesn't it mean there's more it. gold. Well, all that synthetic paper gold that doesn't actually isn't backed by actual gold lowers the price of gold. No, if can, all that money was having to buy actual gold, the price of gold would be up a whole lot. You know, this is kind of one of those Robin Hood Reddit rebellions looked at silver. And one of the things you heard here, if like well, me, you ever do want some gold in your portfolio, make sure you're buying actual gold. And meanwhile, they've got Bitcoin futures now, too. So people are buying Bitcoin that doesn't exist. So for gold to go up dra dramatically. Well, but that, that liquidity that would normally go into the market is, is not ending up in the market. Yeah. Theoretically, if that money was buying actual gold in the same way you said, if that blows up, which it probably will, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to send, you know. Yeah. Gold's going to go up a lot. No, people people think they're buying gold, and they're not because they trust that the counterparty is going to have it if they want it. But a lot of these people that are trading gold futures, they don't actually want the gold. They just want to trade it. But at some point, they're going to want it, and it's just not going to be there. Yeah, there's a run on the bank, uh, which probably will happen at some point. All right, you guys. Let me get a round of applause for my guests.